Hi, welcome to That's So Nova. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, I have puppy hair on my face, I think. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for stopping by, and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. If you're new to um, That's So Nova, I'm Nova, and I like to make bags, quilts, all kinds of stuff. But today we're going to have a really awesome tutorial for the Quilted Hortensia Bag by Aura Rosa Patterns. If you're new here, then you... If you're new here, then you know that this channel, we absolutely adore um, Aura Rosa's patterns because they're very high-end chic with high-end chic look and not difficult construction. Um, so we're going to get into this. I'm going to put you in camera view one right now. Um, you're going to need to get the following... All the information, for all, where to purchase a pattern will be in my description box. You're going to need your strap, your main panel, your zipper panel, your side connectors, your flaps, your side panels, main lining, main lining sides panels, and slip pockets, zipper pocket, and zippered in exterior pockets cut out. There are the, the recommended uh, stabilizers and interfacings that need to be interfaced to your bag. I'm going to be doing the um, horizontal, wait, is it hard? I'm like losing my own words. Today. Have you ever had one of those days? That is today. All right, we're going to be doing the verticals, not the horizontal, but you probably could. Um, we're going to do, be doing the, the vertical quilting, and we will start on page 14. So what you're going to need to do so I always have an alcohol pad in case um, my double-sided tape gums up the needles. What you need to do is on one side, you need to measure in one and three-eighths of an inch, and you're going to draw a line. Then you're going to go one inch over, draw a line. You could do this with a Tandy leather pen. This is a Mormino pen with a Tandy ink. And I always tell people to do a patch test, like a little circle or something, because some materials don't, like they hold on to the tandy leather and it, it can be frustrating if it doesn't work then you use like a chalk pencil or choco pen and you're gonna measure one inch over until your last one inch and then it'll you'll have a one and three eighths of an inch um, on both sides and it's very important to make these sides um equal so before you start quilting measure out your line so it's one three eighths here and one and three eighths here if you don't it, it's going to look like an awkward end to the back so you're going to quilt that like i did i'm using i have cork uh, um, a seafoam green cork and i have green thread that's 70 weight on the back you're going to see I guess all the things I cut out. <laughs> um, you're going to see the foam. It's going to be the a recommended amount. It stays out of the seam allowances, and you want that for the tops of your bags, the sides of your bag, so it's easier um, to sew it, and it won't look bulky. And then I put, I didn't have um, Shape Flex 1R1, or, or usually I use Self-Use, so I use some Taylor um, polyester non-woven interfacing to adhere and keep my foam piece stay together. There's also a really cool like like checkered quilting that I'm going to try really soon because I think it looks really pretty. So we're going to start using pack one. Pack one has your exterior, your exterior panel, your zipper panels, your flap, your flap lining, zipper tape, and your um, lock. So let's start. We're going to take our quilted pattern piece and put it to the side for all right now. We'll be gathering it soon. You're going to want to get your um, pattern piece A that's been fused with pattern piece B. So here is my pattern piece A, um, and I have uh, a fusible fleece. I'm using um, Bouncy Firm, the light. Um, Bouncy Firm is from uh, Serial Bag Maker. It's one of, I like it better than fleece for some odd reason, but... I didn't have enough, so I have a combination of fusible fleece and fusible um, bouncy firm. And on the side, I have uh, my lining fabric, which is going to be brown waterproof canvas. We're going to go ahead and we're going to clip all the pack, um, clip and line everything up as best we possibly can. And I always like to literally put a clip at the top. It just 
just to make sure everything lines up really nice and smooth. We're going to go around this with a 3 8 of an inch. I'm using a Tech 70 weight thread and I am using the number 3 guide on my on my stitching uh, for the 3 8 of an inch and my stitch length is at a 4.5. At the beginning of any bag that I'm about to turn, I like to back stitch three or four stitches to like secure that stitch, and when I flip it, it doesn't turn. So it kind of goes straight, and then there is a slight curve. Take your time around the edges. Just make sure you stay within that three eighths of an inch. best tip I can give you for top stitching is breathe. <laughs> I think sometimes when we get, we're so caught up on the perfect stitches, we um, forget that breathing is important. <laughs> Trust me, I have to say it all the time. And what I would do at this point is grab um, pinking shears, which of course I did not have at the table, but now I reached over to my other lap table and I got it. I apologize for that. We're going to um, take this off. We're going to trim up the excess threads. And then I'm going to take this clip off and I'm going just to pink around this, leaving a um, one eighth of an inch. And if you accidentally uh, pink into your shears or clip into your, not clip into your shears, um, your stitch line, just go around the one eighth of an inch above the prior stitch line and it'll be just a little bit smaller. It won't be tremendously noticeable, but if you can, try not to accidentally clip into your um, stitch line. All right. So I'm going to put these shears to the side. I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn it right sides out. Okay, and we're just going to line everything up nice and neat. And I'm just finger pressing to make sure that I don't want the lining to pull through. Like sometimes it happens when you pull it through and you can see the um, brown lining. I'm trying to make sure that I only see the seafoam green. So I'm just pressing along with my fingers before I top stitch. And you could put clips on it in areas that you feel like might be a little bit more difficult that is is rolling over because it naturally wants to take the lighter fabric and roll it on over. So we're going to top stitch just that one eighth of an inch. And I like to do a little back stitch just to secure the stitch. Again, take your time. If you have to stop, make sure that your needle is in the needle down position. All right, so our flap is done. We're going to now take our, get our main body piece and our flap piece. Um, what I like to do is I like to bring the two edges to the to meet, and then I like to find my center and do a little V. I, I, for me, it's really important to find my centers because I, <laughs> I'm notorious thinking, oh yeah, I can eyeball this, and then all of a sudden I'm crying because. It's off by one fourth of an inch. <laughs> so finding my centers just really helped tremendously. And I'm just going to find it there. And again, find it here. All right. So we're going to base this one side, the flap on, putting the right sides of your flap to the right sides of your 
main panel and I'm just going to put a few clips to keep everything from not shifting. All right, we're going to base this at one eighth of an inch. All right, we're going to cut the strings, the threads. I always say string, I don't know why. And we base it the flap on. So then we're going to follow, we're going to go to now to pay, um, page 18. You're going to take this and you're going to just put it aside for right now. And you're going to grab your zipper panels. So on your zipper panels, you should have your one eight inch um, zipper and then your zipper panel. I'm sorry, not eight inches, is it? I apologize. It's 11. We're going to take the right side of the zipper and put it to the right side of our zipper panel. We are going to sew this at three eighths of an inch. And I like to just tape everything. You also could put like a one eighth of an inch double sided tape and it keeps everything aligned. So we're gonna sew again you want the right edge of the zipper um, to match right sides together with the zipper tape. Okay, and we're not basting, we're sewing at 3 8 of an inch. And there's a note in here, if you quilt, you might need to cut the, not only the zipper tape, but the pattern piece down to uh, 1 8 shorter because quilting takes up, it kind of shrinks the fabric. Trim down our threads. And we're going to do that to the other side. And as you can see, the fleece is in between. And then I use, again, instead of using like a Shape Flex 101 and or so fuse, I use some non-polyester, non-stretch fabric. All right, so we're going to now um, take these and we're going to bring our main panel piece back. And we're going to... So, each side, we're going to take the zippers are going to be on the outside, and we're going to sew each side down using three eighths of an inch. Make sure you have right sides together and you're clipping. Just going to trim off that one eighth of an inch on my panel that I accidentally left. Because you want everything to align. Right. All right. So we're going to sew this down using three eighths of an inch. Back stitch in the beginning and end. I usually back stitch one to two stitches. I'm using my 1541 um, Juki. Um, the bag that I made it, that you may see in the pattern group, I made that on my Juki 5550, and that's equivalent to a, um, Q, a Juki QVP Mini. It just has the motor on the outside of the versus the inside of the machine. This is 
Alex herself, she makes all her back patterns so they're domestic friendly because of the tips and tricks. And they're also industrial friendly and you will have bulk. Just because you have a machine that can sew over the bulk, the bulk is still very noticeable. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to, before we top stitch, we're going to trim the main panel piece only at to one eighth of an inch. Not the zipper panel, the main panel to one eighth of an inch. So we're removing that bulk and just take your time, kind of grade your scissors in between the the fabrics. A pair of duckbill scissors would actually work really good at this. And it's removing all the bulk. So we're leaving the zipper panel alone and we're not trimming that. We're only doing the main panel. This is this is called grading. And what it does, it provides a less bulkier seam and it looks really high end and professional. If you're a garment sewer, you know exactly how to do this. You probably have great seams a million times over. So it should be a real good transition over for a bag maker. So now we're going to now press the seams towards the inside panel. We're not, we don't want it going towards the zipper. We want it going to the main um, we want it, the, the seam allowance to go to the main panel. And we're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch. Because we're going to be doing some binding, I do walk my top stitches in because there's no real cutting the the binding part down so I just want to make sure those stitches don't go anywhere or if you could pull one up you're not now unraveling all your hard work again so just to show you we're going to take lay it flat and don't have your seam go this way you want it to have the seam press towards press towards the main panel and we're going to top stitch again I lock the stitch, one stitch or two. It's really your discretion. You don't have to lock it all. And surprisingly, because you cut the bolt out of this, you're going to see how easy you're going to stitch over it. Again, Alexis is like a genius when it comes down to making things super domestic friendly. All right, this is looking good. So we're going to now install our lock. So for this part, you're going to gather, you want to gather your, your two number five zipper pulls. And I'm using mine from Zipper Valley. I really love these limited edition ones. I actually need to order some more. They're just, they, I love the way they look. I love round. And um, we're going to gather that. We're going to install the female part of the lock first. So my female part of the lock is a bow. So what I'm going to do is use this as the template. I unscrewed this and now I'm going to use this as a template. So you're going you're to install the female in the middle of where you want where to you want it to lie so towards the end so I'm just going to place these two pieces together and I'm going to find my center I can't clip because that will destroy all of our hard work we just put in so I'm going to grab a marking tool I'm trying to find my silver pen I just had it and do you know how things just disappear and I'm going to mark where I want the bow tie to go. And I'm just going to put a little purple mark. So I'm going to lay this flat. And you can see it's center. I'm going to now use... <laughs> I promise you, I always lose these. Um, I'm going to use this part as my template to areas that I need to cut out. I'm going to center it as best I possibly can. And I'm going to draw what needs to be cut out so normally when I have something like this I kind of just um, draw 
just that all the areas that need to be cut out are cut out. All right, it looks like an eye. The eye of Sauron. <laughs> Total nerd if you haven't noticed. <laughs> um, I'm going to grab a ruler to help, and I'm going to get an X-Acto knife. And you don't have to use an exacto knife. You can use a pair of scissors, just a really sharp pair. And cut little. You always can cut more later, but you can't add stuff. So you would have to remove it, that all the hard work you did. I always cut less just in case I need to, you know, I cut too much. I'm err on the side of caution with this. You got this. You can totally make it happen. And I'm just going to clean up this a little bit better. All right. And I'm going to test my, my uh, part to see if I can see how I could put one screw over, but I can't really all the way on the other side so I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut a little bit more at a time until I can get the area I need it to be flip it back over and just test Okay, I need a little bit more. I use it like usually use embroidery scissors because they have like a really sharp turn. Um, but I don't know where I placed them to be honest. <laughs> I used them last and now I don't know where it is in the chaos I call my room. All right, so. All right, and you want it to be as clean as possible. If you have little little um, areas that are like having little strings, try to snip them up to be clean so they don't show through. All right, just a little bit more here and we'll be good to go. Yep. All right. So I'm going to take this and if you want, you can add a dab of glue if you, you want to feel like it's more secure, but it really won't go anywhere with the screws. And the, I don't like doing glue because of the simple fact that if I'm making this for someone and I need to like, like reconstruct See how this one little piece of hair, like not hair, but if I want to, if I'm read, I, I'm like, let's say I have to, like a rivet came out or something and you need to take this part off, then it will be very difficult if it's glued in. All right. And I'm going to take my screws. And I'm going to first put in my first screw. And I'm not going to screw it in all the way. I'm going to wait until I clear it, make sure I have the area completely clear. And I can put the other screw in. When you put in one screw tight in all the way, sometimes it can, um, can prevent the other screw hole to match up. So it all depends on your lock. All right, so we have the female part of our part of the bag. I'm going to now move the X-Acto knife and the plate and try to clear off my table just a little bit so it doesn't look too chaotic. But again, if it's not chaotic, it is not Shinova. <laughs> 
it would be some weird hybrid. So we want to know where to put our metal lock. So what we're going to do is take our zipper, take one of the two, and we're going to zip it up. Now it could be a little difficult, take your time. Um, if you have a zipper jig or whatever makes it easier for you. Like I, I, I'm known for re-zipping and unzipping a thousand times. Oh, that's why it does. You know, you have the back of the zipper tape on there. It's like, why is it so thick? <laughs> So we're going to put the other one on there too because we want to figure out where the perfect ideal part to put the melon and put both putting both zippers on there gives you a better indication um, of the like of the zippers being on there um, to account for because it, it'll be really easier to try to just zip it off and say that's fine but these take up little rooms whether it's one eighth of an inch or whatever so having both zippers on there is kind of imperative so that way you can get the best um, you can get the best idea of what your zipper, what your zipper, um, weight and everything is before you put in the, the melt portion. All right. So what we're going to do is flip this over like this, and then we can make a mark. Grab a pen again. Like this is the best area for it because the bag's going to go like this. So you could just make a little bit of a mark. And I'm going to double check, look it over it again. Yep. Yep. That's the best area. Also, while you're here, you can see, okay, I, where do I want to put my um, logo? If you have a like a handmade logo, um, I'm going to put, I think it will look good right around here. So I'm going to now unzip, put my zippers aside for right now. I'm going to grab the male part of my twist lock. I'm going to grab my name tag and the male part, the female part of that, and I'm going to get back my exacto. I'm going to going to just. Do a nice little slice. If you're doing woven, you do need to put like a fray check or a glue so that way it doesn't, um, it doesn't like the, you won't have like a, a fraying action. So okay. And then I'm going to, you can get a flathead or a flathead screwdriver or a back of a pen just to get the prongs down. I'm going to get some electrical tape to help with friction so that way it won't rub against the lining. And press that down and then I'm going to do the same thing with my name tag. And I'm going to make a mark.
Well, the exacto knife. <laughs> I'm going to make sure the prongs are as far away as that one part where it goes into the one um, third of one, one and three eighths so it doesn't get caught into any kind of little seam allowance. You can put your um, logo anywhere. You can put it inside the bag. If you don't have a logo, you can do a lot of things. Like I sometimes like to sign the insides of my bag in case someone opens it up, they know it's mine. <laughs> so we have installed our male, our female, and um, our main tag. We're going to now push this aside for right now. And we are going to grab our main, we're going to gather our lining slip pocket piece and our main part of the slip, um, main lining for the lining piece. We're going to take your lining pocket for your slip pocket and you're going to stitch it at three eighths of an inch. You're going to go inside and turn it right sides out. You're going to get it all nice and neat. And I'm going to now top stitch this at one eighth of an inch. Okay. I made markings of 2.5 inches down from the top and bottom of each one and I'm going to put some clips on all the sides so that way when I get stitched this down it'll be it'll work out. I also want to put a label in this so I'm putting that you look really pretty today <laughs> right here so I can stitch it down and I'm going to go around this with one eighth of an inch, so two five two point five inches down. And we're just going around, up, going down, then across at one eighth of an inch. I'm using waterproof canvas for my lining, and the green is actually a cotton that I got from connecting threads like six years ago, and I just thought it would look really cool because it's like a map. So I'm going to, um, I, I always try to sew the first area of a zipper where the, like there's a bolt, there's the I keep dropping clips where the um, metal part is so that way it's not as hard to sew when I'm doing the other side. All right, so three eighths of an inch back stitch at the beginning and end. I don't know if you're new to my channel, then you know whenever I sew over a seam, I back stitch over it. I don't know why. It's super weird. It's just something I do. I just want to give that area a little bit more extra reinforcement. And then I'm going to take the flap and put it down. and three-eighths of an inch there. Okay. All right, 
we're gonna just trying to make sure I get any like little pieces that don't line up. It'll be better to do it on the other side. Sorry. <laughs> We're gonna turn these right sides out. Oh, I'm trying. Threads will be good. This looks so good. And we're gonna top stitch one eighth of an inch. You're gonna have to get really learn. I I say let's get squishy with it in a lot of very <laughs> in a lot of videos. You're, for this bag, you're gonna have to get squishy sometimes. But it'll bounce back because there's not like a there's not a stabilizer that will make it like all wrinkly, so it'll bounce back well. This side, everything flat. Okay, and and by trimming those areas, you have less bulk in that when you're top stitching, so your stitches look more even and concise. And we're going to trim. And I'm just like right now when I have it flat, I want to make sure there's like over here, there's like a little bit of brown. This is not in the pattern. This is just something you, I know you never want your lining longer than your exterior because when you're binding, things will get a little wonky. It's not too much. It's not too bad. All right. All right. So we're going to put this aside for right now, and then we're going to grab our side pieces. And that's pattern piece C. We're going to grab the lining and the exterior and you can use a variety there is a really cool method that she does with an invisible um connector where it's like a three-eighth of an inch gap and it's like it comes out beautifully and effortlessly you this is a really great opportunity to explore different um hardware too you may have something in your stash that you've been wanting to try and you're like i don't know what bag to do it this bag because it's not very big and it's kind of um a little bit tinier you can try a lot of a variation of different hardware i'm going to be using i'm gonna get it this bridge connector um because this also can be a strap connector it's not very um it's not very big and when I can I can connect my you can connect it really easily and it just it won't be bulky in the way so I used my um, female part as a template and I punched two holes and now I'm going to get the screws that always disappear like then when I'm sweeping, I find like a bazillion screws. I'm like, awesome. When I needed you, you weren't there. So <laughs> I'm going to go get my screwdriver that I just had. I promise. Oh, it's right there looking at you dead in the face. And I'm going to take one screw and thread it through the female portion. Go through the hole that I created and then place this right on top of it. I'm not going to screw this screw all the way in. I'm going to screw it in um, just so enough for it to catch and it's still like very um, loose and kind of wobbly. So that way I can place this other screw in 
without any like resistance. Don't strip your screws, just make sure it's nice and tight. Because if you strip it and then like you need to like fix something, it could be all a hazard and a pain. I'm going to grab some electrical tape. And I'm just going to place it right over the metal. So once you have that, you have your two sides. And then you need to make these, your, your exterior and your interior piece, one. So we're just going to sew around this at one eighth of an inch. Just to make sure everything fits good. Bring this over to the machine. Face this at one eighth of an inch. And the basting, think of it as a great thing because now you're getting a fill of the bag when you're installing it. When you're installing the sides. And we're going to trim. And what I'm going to do is any areas that the, the lining fabric is poking out more, I'm just going to trim around that because, again, if your lining's poking out more, then that you have a, a stronger chance of not catching the exterior. It's like a, like, it's like a false sense of hope in that area. Um, so I'm going to go around here, base this together. All right. Okay. All right. We got that part. We're going to now put the zipper. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to put the zippers in. Now uh, we're going to put the zippers in, install it in the wrong sides out. So you're going to want, it's, it, it's going to feel like it's not right, but it'll, it'll get there. I promise. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take our zipper pulls and zippers. Sorry. I'm just being all discombobulated and install it. It may take a minute. It will all go work through as soon as my zipper pulls want to not act a donkey. It would help if I actually put the zipper teeth in. There we go. I'm going to just zip it. To the other side and I'm gonna grab my other zipper pull and do the same thing it takes just a little bit of extra time and I know it's you're like oh no I can't do this you can do this you could it just it's just the reverse of what we always been thinking to do <laughs> and I have it on so at this point you could use a you it's recommended to put a staple there um, I am known for accidentally sewing over staples, so I'm going to actually go within my seam allowance and make a, a zipper stop by sewing it together with a needle and thread. It does take a little bit more time, and yes, it's annoying, but I am a person that accidentally sews over staples and it freaks me out um i'm not gonna lie to you a lot of awesome sewists in our um community use zippers uh, uh staples 
sometimes I, I'm, I'm really good at it. I've used it before. And other times I'm like, oh my God, I'm like really bad at this. And I'm going to do this on the other side. So I'm just doing like, a, I'm going around the te zipper teeth within the seam allowance. Trying not to do like more than one eighth of an inch in or between one eighth of an inch and one fourth. And just really just making a couple stitches. A staple is so much faster. And again, a lot of the people in their testing group did it and it worked amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> so you're just going to experience some good old fashioned hand stitching. All right. So we made our zipper stops and then I'm just going to like singe just to make sure that it extra stop. It's extra. So our, our, um, this is the top part. So I always like to find my, um, exterior and what I did last time is I sewed this to be like one so I removed this ginormous stapler <laughs> and I machine basted this down um, at one eighth of an inch all the way around to make this fabric as one and you could back stitch over the zippers if you wish to <laughs> That's why I, I didn't machine baste it at first because I wanted to get it in its the zippers in make those extra zipper stops and please get comfortable. We're going to be squishing your bag a lot today. And because it's smaller, we're going to have to do smaller stitching. And then I'm going to do smaller stitches before we uh, have to rotate the bag again. All right. Trimming up those threads. See how it's like one unit. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to squish the heck out of my bag. <laughs> it's going to be all for good. You'll see. And then when I get to that zipper stop area that I'm just going to do like a couple back stitches. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> so uh, the reason why I also do it this way, I had to get used to like repositioning the bag and it's when I'm when it's the needles down. If you are at home and you have a domestic that has a free arm, this might be easier for you to do that at this time. Alright, so we have this all now. It's one unit, one solid piece. Everything will get caught in it. Because I don't know about you, but that's always my favorite scariest thing. I'm like, is it going to get caught? So I'm going to now find my, this is the center of this piece, the zip top of the zipper. And I'm just going to make a small little V at the bottom here because that's the other center. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Small little V. All right. We're going to take our centers and... You could just find your centers by folding this over and make it a V. A little v, a v mark, or you can um, draw. We're going to grab some clips. And I'm going to use a lot of clips. I'm going to use like every clip I have in my arsenal. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm an over clipper and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. <laughs> Now, um, there are a lot of testers use staples. Um, there was a tester that I did something that I, I've mentioned before on my channel. They got a big doll needle after they um, clipped it together and they hand stitched it like just real quick before they put it inside the machine so nothing moves, nothing adjusts, nothing shifts. I 
I always love how her gussets fit so nicely over the pieces. Like it's, it's so cool. <laughs> going to make sure there's no lumps. You're like Shinova, that's a slew full of clips, and you're absolutely right. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to show you how I do this. Um, you can follow exactly like the pattern and you can staple. There's no shame in stapling. It looks really cool. I'm going to squish down my bag <laughs> and I'm going to take, I'm going to have my, um, my stiletto to help me and I'm going to go underneath the machine and we're going to stitch around this at one fourth of an inch. And I'm just squishing, stopping with the needle down, removing the clips, stopping with the needle down, and then readjusting. That That's the key to this, is to continuously readjust. Continuously, continuously. And if you like miss some, don't fret. We're we're only doing one fourth of an inch seam, so um, allowance right now. So you can always unpick and just go back over that area. And I'm gonna have to reclip because. This, the clips came out of on this side and I want to make sure all edges are matching. So far so good though. I have no complaints. So I'm just going to reclip this real quick on this side. It's only like three or four inches but it's better to catch it in its early stage so that way You'll be okay. So, squishing my bag. <laughs> squishing your bag is good. Making sure raw edges meet. And you see me just rotating my bag. Use your stiletto if you need to. Now, you could possibly do it, um, where's my scissors? Um, you possibly could do it, like, where you're sewing it this way around. I just feel like the taller something is, it's a little hard to maneuver. All right? So we have this. Cool. Now I'm going to grab some binding. Now, I don't know how um, waterproof canvas binding would go because this is such an oval shape. So I'm using twill tape. 
And what I usually do is I try to find toilet tape that's the similar color. Um, I didn't have any that that's brown. So I'm going to use this neutral, natural toilet tape. I love binding with toilet tape. It gives it an extra structure and it like it's like bones to the bag. Again, toilet tape is used in a lot of quarter street um, making corsets. So I'm going to take this and I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to do something that you're probably like, what? I'm going to use some double-sided tape, but I get my toilet tape in exactly one inch so I can get the one inch um, double-sided tape from Waywack and I place it directly on it. So both sides are going to, oh, it's, I feel like it's like a fun cheat, <laughs> like a super fun. All right. So I'm going to put this double-sided tape to the side. All right. I'm going to always put my, um, I like to start in the beginning on the top where the zipper tape is because when people look inside the bag, they can see the seam. I'm going to open, going to remove some of the paper tape. And what I do is I just kind of start folding over. Sometimes if I, I'll mark a half an inch or the center in between the twill tape um, before I put the double-sided tape so I can have a guide. Other times, I, most of the time, I'm not going to lie, I just eyeball it. And when I get to this side, um, I fold it in on itself and cover the raw edge of the other side. So once I clip this down, I just kind of fold the double sided tape over and if I have to readjust I'll do that that's the beauty of double sided tape right all right so now we're gonna sew at three-eighths of an inch we're gonna get a little squishy with it but it works out if you don't catch everything the first time, it's fine. You can just go over it. I, I hardly ever catch it the first time. It just, I like to, to sew without clips. <laughs> so I eat the double-sided tape. So now we're going to sew at three-eighths of an inch. And I'm going to grab my stiletto. And my stiletto is going to be where I want my finger to be, but I'm not going to put it because I don't want it to be sewn over. Again, ask me how I know. I'm just positioning, keep squishing my bag. The other day I got it all in one felt swoop. I was like, yeah, I rock. Okay, so I could totally see there's some areas that I did not catch, and that's cool. Um, it's not like a whole bunch, so it's not going to hurt. I'm going to go over to the section and see it's all done there. And then on this side, it, it did not catch. So I'm going to bring it top side and catch it. And I'm just going to bring it over to the zipper one more time. I feel like you can never have enough like stitches over a zipper. I don't know why. Sorry, I'm trying to get this one little piece that's trying to be finicky with me. 
and it took my stiletto. <laughs> All right, so we got one down, one to go. We're almost done. This is a pretty fast bag. I feel like it comes together beautifully, and it's pretty fun. So, all right. I'm just going to trim those down. I, don't you hear when you trim down, and then, you like, there's a little bit left, and you're like, come oh, on, I just trimmed you. All right. We're going to start clipping again. And it, you can see where this could be easy if you want to start stapling. Um, because it it's a, it's small, so it's not going to really... One won't need a lot of staples to remove. And two, it just... It's, it's not a big... Um, it's not a big side piece. All right. Okay. Just take your time. It's going to all, it'll work out. Like you just, my best suggestion is you, you know you're going to have to get a little bit squishy. And once you get it, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, this is easy breezy. Cover girl. Sorry. It was too, it was too, <laughs> too easy, too temptation. So I'm going to take it, squish it, and I'm going to start. In an area that I can have a little bit more flatter than the rest of the bag. One fourth of an inch. And I'm going to grab my stiletto because, again, your stiletto can go places that your finger cannot. And if you have to stop to reclip, just backstitch and you'll be fine. You got this, just breathe. See, readjust. Squish. <laughs> Make sure you there's no um, crinkles below the stitch line. It can be above where you're sewing and it won't show through, but if it's below, it's going to show through. I have to back stitch off because I moved a whole bunch of clips, but it's fine. Okay. You're like, it's fine, it's fine. And I'm crying a little bit inside. <laughs> I'm just playing, I'm not doing that. But I've done that where I'm like, it's okay. It wasn't for me today, but tomorrow. <laughs> So, I'm going to squish the bag. All 
right. Trim those threads so they don't get caught up. And um, my binding that. So like I measure it by just wrapping it around and then I make a tell that's like one and a half inches so it can fold on itself. And then I just put my binding away. Then I'm going to... <laughs> I hear my dog scratching. It sounds like knocking at the door. Um, I'm going to put this Uh, this one inch on my twill tape as straight as I possibly can. It's never always straight though. I'm just going to be keeping it 100. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put this one inch tape aside and then we're doing the same method. We're just going to pull back. And I just, again, the, if, I, if drawing your half inch mark um, on the twill tape, I should have done but before I did it, but I did not. So what's done is done. <laughs> and I'm just going to take it and go around. Twill tape comes in so many different colors. I usually have a slew of them, but the most color, most popular color is natural or black. I just got finished done with the Erica Bowler bag, and I had like this really cool olive green, so I was like really excited about that. And then I'm just going to take this first part and just fold over on itself and this will be the one area that I clip because it has the edge and then I'm just gonna fold over all right let's get started three eighths of an inch all the way around back stitch at the beginning and end if you want to, use your stiletto. When you position, make sure your needle is down. My stiletto is not wanting to stay in. Trimming those raw threads. Going to see just one area. Oh, sucky, sucky. Okay, so I'm going to sew down this one area. Sometimes if I'm feeling like extra, um, I'll um, just sew to the zipper part again. But it's really important to have your pull your threads back so that way you don't lose your top. <laughs> top part of this. All right. Back to squishy.
can just squish and move. This is like, to me, the perfect bag to practice your binding on because it's not that much binding. So you try different methods. Uh, like I like to use fold over bias binding. Um, I, I was going to make some for this, but I did not. Okay, so we have our bag. We're going to open up our zippers. I like to take the flap out first. And then I just need to trim this one rogue hair, a <laughs> little thread. You're going to pull this out. And be like, oh, please make sure I caught everything. Please make sure I caught everything. Because it happens to all of us. <laughs> So as I pull out one side, I'm going to push my fingers in towards the binding so that way it doesn't roll on itself. And do the same thing on this side. Just push it out. I, I understand why they have these protect protections over the the <laughs> the, the pulls, but sometimes I I will struggle trying to take them off. Appreciate it, and not never not gonna appreciate it, but the struggle is real. <laughs> This is super cute. So I would unzip it and just make sure that you poke out. And I like to just like roll my fingers in between the seams to, to get a really nice pronounce. See how you one three one third of an inch? One and one three eighths, I mean. So that way it's all one inch now. Oh, this is a beautiful bag. This pattern is so amazing. So you have your zipper pocket, your slip pocket. I'm sorry, you have your zipper pocket and your slip pocket. And we'll just... And I like to just roll. Look at how cute that is. All right, let's make the strap. Now you could use like a silver like strap. It'll be fine. I... I should check the, my bobbin because it would be unfortunate if I uh, to start toxicing and it just dies. So I'm folding this on itself and leaving like a one eighth of an inch gap in the middle. So when I fold this in half, it'll be just, it'll be good. I love this color cork. Very spring, happy feelings. And then just take your time. Um, I used the chain on my last one and I love the way it looked. So I wanted to try with a adjustable strap on this one. Because chains sometimes are really cute, but they could be uncomfortable for some people. So, you know, I like to give options. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So let me put this over here and I'm going to check my bobbin real quick to see where we're at because I don't want to, again, top stitch and I'm like, yeah, I'm out of thread. Yeah, this is low. So that was a good call. Good call, Shinova. Okay. Right. Trim these down a little bit. And we're going to top stitch. We're going to go one eighth of an inch on both sides to top stitch it. Take your time. Um, clip it if you need to. I like to back stitch. thread decided to act up. Let's see. Oh, there was like a little bit of pressure from the light. Sometimes at my adjustable light, um, the light that I have on top of my sewing machine, if I push it to the side, it'll go into the, um, the thread and it will make it not act right. <laughs> And unfortunately, that's what happened. So I'm going to go over the area where it messed up and just backstitch. Okay, and then we're going to go down as we go across. And then I'm going to trim these threads before going further. And then one eighth of an inch on the other side. You just let it fly. Back stitch off. Alright, and then I'm going to punch some holes. I'm going to go um, Oops, my pen is not even working too. Alright, I'm just having one of those days where things are like, I am not going to work for you. <laughs> it's full. I'm going to go a half inch up. 
And I'm going to do it on the other side as well. Make some marks. All right. Get my little um, hole puncher. Sorry, I have to make sure the holes actually punch through. So we're going to grab some rivets, our swivel clasp, we have two, and then we should have one adjustable tri-glide. And I'm going to grab two males and two, and two females. Rivets. I have my um, press that I have from Mikis and Margo. They're on um, Etsy. They're a little mom and pop shop, but they have like the best customer service ever. I'm going to thread it through match the holes, thread the metal part in, and put it through both layers of the cork. Get a female and just Snap it like you set it together. You should have like a little bit of a click and then I'm going to set it And you don't have to set it if you if there's like indentations you may have set it wrong and it could make your um It can pop off and it wouldn't be the best so I'm going to th thread one uh, slider through make sure everything is straight and thread this back onto itself. I usually, what I like to do before I set anything, I like to just make sure everything's nice and straight. Take this other and thread it, thread it through. Male in and the female in. And press it. Put this out of the way. And now we have an absolutely gorgeous, it's so gorgeous, an absolutely gorgeous barrel bag. And it is so cute. You have, uh, you have your turn lock, you could do a magnet as well. You have a double zipper right here. You have your zipper pocket and, and your nice lining slip pocket. And let me close this up. This is really cute. It comes together really fast. It's a nice size. It's perfect. I feel like this is like going to be the spring bag. And like I said, you can decorate this with like a chain. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. This bag is super cute, super functional, and it could be your everyday bag. So I'm hoping that you liked this tutorial. If you did, if you can like and subscribe, it helps the channel out tremendously. If you will like, if you have questions in reference to this bag that maybe I didn't cover, leave a comment down below. I'm really responsive and I really want to help 
you succeed making this bag. And um, I appreciate everyone that was watching today. If you can like, subscribe, and comment, helps. And if you're like, Shinova, I want to do something special for you. I do have a Kofi, and I'll link that into the description box and pin it in the comment section. So until the next time I see you, I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you, um, when you make this bag, post it inside the group so I can see. And it'll be awesome. You can have a happy sewing day. Bye.